Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Thanks for being here with me today. First and foremost, I want to thank to you know everyone who supports my channel. You guys are amazing. You're wonderful. To, to those that donated to my fundraiser so that I could go to the women's fund and when I couldn't get a ticket, you know, you you said I could just, you know, okay, go down to the Earth Shop Prize Awards. I'm like, "Okay, I'm going to use your donations to help me to do those things." I mean, these things cost money and I couldn't have done it without your support. Thank you for watching my videos and all of your support, sharing and liking. It really, really means the world to me. I want to tell you about my experiences. Now, going to these events, no one's going to give you a handout and say come to my event experience what it's like so that you could tell people what it was like because not everybody can come right and that's what it was for me and i i know sometimes people think well you know you, you got help people you know people are trying to help you do things no they ain't no they ain't and i think if anything i'm an example to people who which if you want something you work hard for it and you go and you try to get it you don't sit and whine about someone not helping you okay and with that said no one helped me except for the people that donated to my my fundraiser and those that watch my videos these are the people that support and help me so some people get this weird idea in their head that I'm like this pawn in a game and I'm being, you know, sent out to do things on behalf of some big high, you know, puppet tier, puppeteer who's like pulling the strings for me. No, uh -uh, that's not happening. That is not happening. Now, it might be happening for someone like a Meghan Marco. <laughs> it ain't happening for P9. Now, let me just tell you, it's not. Okay, right. So just so you can understand a little bit about my background and how I was able to go to. Okay, let's talk about first the Women's Fund. The Women's Fund, we know it was an event that was not open to the media. It was at the Marriott um, downtown Indianapolis. It was in one of those typical rooms where you have people come to conventions. There were a lot of people there. I don't know why some people were saying that it could have been empty. I was there. It was not empty okay they had about roughly I think around maybe 400 women were there you know 10 women to a table it it was definitely an event that had the people show up now when I talked about my video from the hotel how I figured they were able to get the people was because the Sussex squad all over the country they communicate and I was even told this firsthand by someone at the event how they all coordinated to get to the event I don't know if they helped to bring this together knowing that it would be sold out because there was so much demand for it by these Sussex squad women but nonetheless they were able to get the women i saw a lot of black women there a lot okay there were a lot of white women there too it was a good mixture but if i had if i was a betting woman i'd say it was more black women than white women that's what i would say okay so she made a good penny showing up on a private jet mind you and then leaving immediately afterwards she didn't stick around for a reception to to speak to people to have this up close relationship it was all about her coming out doing the event and then she left on the private jet this was not anything more than a money maker for her and to really get her branding out there, to get more people to follow her and to have interest in the things that she is saying. Okay, she didn't want no media there. There was no scrutinizing what she was doing, reporting on it, getting the word out there. It was very minimal. And remember, when they left the Royals, they had talked about being more accessible to news media that was up and coming. We have yet really to see that. There's no real gauge for them to try to give opportunity to up and coming media. 
that was just some nonsense cuckoo wash to, to get people to think that they're they're there to help people okay now on the other hand this event with the Earthshot prize awards with William and Catherine this was completely different it was open to media all types of media it was a much bigger platform the hard goals what they're doing or what Megan more specifically is doing now I know there's some differences because Harry's doing his Invictus games and and, um, they're doing things around mental health but let's just look closely at what Megan herself is doing by herself why by herself her husband has an initiative with the Invictus Games helping disabled veterans okay they have this whole thing around mental health and how Megan suffered mental health abuse by the hands of being you know within the royalty so they clearly have initiatives that they're trying to do that could be quote unquote helping people. So why is it that Megan is trying to do something that is all on her own, completely separate from her husband? Because this was always something she wanted to do before she even met Harry. This was, this was her way of showing herself as a woman to, to further a cause by herself. Okay, and the difference is, is, is huge to me. And this is what I want to point out to you. So Megan's whole thing is she wants to be, you know, have self empowerment, make yourself be heard with your voice. Remember when she said this? What's interesting is I hear a lot of people saying when speaking about girls empowerment, finding and knowing their worth or women's empowerment as well. You'll often hear people say, well, you're helping women find their voices. And I fundamentally disagree with that because Women don't need to find a voice. They have a voice. They need to feel empowered to use it. And people need to be encouraged to listen. This really is a reflection on her, on Megan, and, and what she wanted the royals to give her. She wanted them to give her a voice. She wanted to have her own say in the work around that of the monarchy. She, she didn't want to be a team player. She didn't want to support the queen. Essentially, she was selfish. She is pushing a brand for people to think about what they want and to not work together, to think about your own needs and wants and at any cost, by any means necessary, go out into the world and get what you want. Even if you have to disown your family and even if you have to speak badly about your husband's family, go get what you want. Essentially, that is her message. And if you saw the video that I did about the women's fund when I was there and I spoke to the women, they loved it. They ate it up. They loved hearing this woman, black woman, say, go out and make your voice be heard. Now, I never knew so many didn't think they had a voice. It really boggled my mind to hear this messaging that women were so sucked up into the words that she was saying. And it, it goes to show you what she is doing now without her husband, what she's trying to build as a brand without her husband. I want you to think about people that have inspired movements. This is what Meghan Markle is trying to do. This is her MO. She wants to be a leader who is leading people to empowerment and who is a savior of the people in some some sort this is what she wants to be and if she has an enemy if she has the racist claims behind her it strengthens the voice that she is trying to build it strengthens her branding to try to go out and make your voice be heard stand up against the racist she's getting a award for that stand up against the things that are pressing you. Who are the people that feel most oppressed and marginalized? A lot of times it's women and then minority women. And so why do you think black women are so motivated by hearing her say this? Because they feel like they've been victimized. They feel like they don't have the, the voice that Megan is telling them that they need to get. They feel some way overshadowed by the world and this hearing her speak is empowering to them 
it, it gives them something that they are missing. And I have to tell you folks, I, I don't feel that way. Not at all. Not at all. And I'm going to give you a good example of what happened to me that shows you that it's all in how you look at it. Megan, in my opinion, is working with the Sussex Squad people. She's working with them. Not only that, but did you know that she also worked with Boozy, Christopher Boozy? Oh yes, it's in court documents that she actually was named as a person that paid this man. This was for another, another court case. It came out that Megan was one of the paid celebrities that used his services fact folks so she's working with sussex squad she's working with this christopher boozy she's working with the people to help uplift her brand and who knows who else she could be working with behind the scenes really more powerful people that may not want you to see her and, the, and them together, but perhaps they're helping to pull some strings for her. That could also be the case. Just because she doesn't get invited to certain public events doesn't mean she's not working with certain people. There is a momentum that's behind her that she's definitely going to fuel. And I wondered why Indianapolis? Why? Why? <laughs> well, I believe it's because the people that are within the Sussex squad have a base there that it made sense to hold it there and to go through this women's fund because there are associations with the Sussex squad and the women's fund in that city. There's a women's fund in my city. There's women's funds in different cities. So it ended up being that way, I believe through connections because Indianapolis is not really a huge big city, but there had to be some kind of coming together at that location for a reason, okay? And I and I personally, I think that was the reason. And you know, you think about the women that are of color that feel marginalized. They feel that they are marginalized by the powers of, of the white man. This could even be white women people of power and who do a lot of people see that as being over in Great Britain the royal family this is why there is this assumption that the royal family is racist because of all the things that have happened around um, Megan and the continuing continuing of uh, fueling racist claims just like this lady that this Marlene lady who is now getting an invitation to Buckingham Palace by King Charles and all that does is it helps this woman's narrative hi Mr. Otis hello 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 it helps the narrative because it says that she was victimized there were people that were Miss Hussey was racist towards her Come to the come to Buckingham Palace and let's talk about it. Let's talk about what that that woman did to you. And, and, and that's what's essentially happening. And I think it's a big mistake. Like, why do you even give this woman a voice? You're giving her more PR, more public relations to, to fuel her narrative of racism. So, so this is why some people would, wouldn't fall for, this is the reason why some people wouldn't fall for Megan's MO is because, you know, I know the value of hard work. I know how you can't relate, you can't really rely on people that you, you think might be able to help you because you just never know, you know, people sometimes don't want to help you and, and, and that's fine. But is that a reason to complain about, you know, not being able to have success in life because nobody wants to help you? I mean, really, it, it's like, you know, people, women have to feel empowered to go out, work, do what you have to do to get what you want to get in life and not need some savior like a Meghan Markle to tell you that you have a voice. It's ridiculous. So okay. so looking at the Earthshot Prize Awards, you know, there's they support other people. They're supporting a good cause, helping the planet, um, supporting the work of the monarchy. They want to help others and their charities. They really are bringing attention to good causes and to other people in a way that is a lot more encompassing than rather than oneself. Thing. This is why the work of Prince uh, William and Princess um, Catherine, the Prince and Princess of Wales, why their work is so important because they're bringing attention to people that have less than. They, they are giving opportunity, they're highlighting. I like what Niall 
Gardner said on Twitter, he said, frankly, the Princess of Wales is in a different league than Meghan Markle. Kate is dedicated to serving the British monarchy and the British people. Meghan is only dedicated to advancing herself and her massive ego. And that's it. She wants to advance her massive ego. Why not support your husband in his initiative with the Invictus game solely and then raise your children? Why the need to start something so big that would take you away from your little children, take you away from doing important work that could go towards your husband's charity? Like, why do you have to be self branding something? So looking at my experiences as an individual now to the Earthshot Prize Awards, I was able to get in. I got a press pass. And this is why I think I was able to get the press pass, because at first they said no. As soon as I knew that they were going to be coming to Boston, I was like, pick it up the phone, try to get, you know, I'm going to be, you get a press pass. I want to, I want to cover this event. It wasn't possible with Megan. You see, I didn't get in. I'm out there sitting in the hallway while they're having the event. There was, there was no way to go inside. Okay. But I was able to speak to the women. I was the only person of outside media there. Media didn't even show up to her event. She probably had people inside taking pictures, tweeting that she approved of, but there was no real, real coverage of the event. So I was not given my, my access to, to go um, cover this event, but just let me just give you a little bit about my background. Okay. Cause some of you may not know. So I, you know, I have a bachelor's degree in communications. I have a master's degree. I've studied a variety of things around public speaking, um, acting, communications, technology. There's just a lot that I have studied that I, I feel have, has given me the experience that why not allow me to come on, on behalf of my YouTube channel? You know, I may not be a huge platform like the ones that are going, obviously, but I think having a voice like myself, I'm speaking up. No one told me to go say, have your voice be heard so you could go cover this event. No, I did it because I know my worth. I know what I bring. I know my value. I know that I've done three small documentaries. Um, I have two podcasts. I'm, I'm right out of high school. I worked for my local television station here. I worked for one of the largest public relations firms in Los Angeles, Fleischman Hilliard. I have done a lot of things around media. I've produced my own stage productions. I feel that I have the experience to warrant me getting a press pass to go cover this event. And so I sent them my information for the Earthshot Prize Awards and they said, no. I said, okay, you need to say yes. And here's why. <laughs> and then eventually I got my press pass and then I was able to go. And so it worked out for me. No one, I got no one to help me get that. I got that on my own, period. No one pulled any strings for me to get the press pass. And so I think when I say that you have to talk to women about using their voice through your example. So just also being at the event. So this was what was so cool because I was able to be with the press, right? And I had my little badge. See, here I am with my badge. Hey, you guys, I'm here. I got my press pass for the Earthshot Prize Awards, getting ready to go inside and give you all of my experiences. And some people saw me come up and they were like, well, who are you? What, 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 stop. What, 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 who you, who you, right? And I was like, bam, <laughs> I'm with the press. And then they were like, okay, okay, okay. So, you know, I showed up, I was there all day, you know, hanging out, was just trying to see what I can see. And the experience was amazing. I loved being there. The vibe, the feeling, the excitement, the crowds, the people. When I first got there, you know, I, I was able to just experience the excitement. Whenever a car would pull up, people would start looking like, okay, is it them? Is it them? It was like, ah, yay, no. Ah, uh, you know, they weren't, they were just like certain people would get out the car and you know, they were just, but that was, I thought that was interesting. But, um, so I didn't end up seeing them when they arrived, but I saw them when they left. Oh yes, I did. Princess Catherine. 
So that was me and my little camera phone. It had the nerve to die right when they walked out. But I found it on the news station that was standing actually right next to me. And then this is the other shot from across the street that their other photographer got. So I'm u I'm using their footage because of my phone died. But I was literally standing right there next to them. Um, and then when they came out, I'm yelling and, <laughs> and then my phone died. I wanted to cry. I was like, no. And then I was able to shoot a couple of snapshots. So here I am with them in the shot. And this actually is me. The camera got me on the other side of the street. And you can see I'm just now packing up because they just left. But it was really funny how like I'm at the very last moment, my equipment didn't work. And right when they were coming out is, is when I actually got to see them up close. And that was a really neat experience being able to see them up close. I didn't see them when they arrived because that's when I actually was able to go get my pass. And that's when I went inside and I got my seat and waited for the show. And it was so electrifying. And in the beginning, they said, they, they were recording this for television. So when the when the prince and princess came in, we were all told to stand when they came in. And then when they came in, we, you know, we stood up and then they came and sat down. And and it was so cool because I was in the balcony and I could see down and like they were right there. And I was just watching them the whole time during the show and just like like trying to read lips and see what they were saying. And they were really like they had have a really good chemistry they 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 sat there they were very um and much in, involved in, in the show and what was going on and 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 very well liked by people they just have a great aura about them and me sitting there watching the show experiencing things that normally happen during the filming of a show was really nice because the music was so much better in person. Like at the end when Ellie, when she sung, oh my goodness, it made you want to get up and just rock down the place. Like it was so electrifying. I loved it. Um, the whole backdrop and the stage and everything. The guests were encouraged to embrace pre-loved outfits and Basically, you know, don't wear something new. Come up in something reused, recycled. And that's exactly what Kate did. So Kate, she was wearing this rented green dress with an emerald choker necklace that belonged to her, her husband's late mother, Princess Diana. Yes, and this dress that you can rent called her um this dress rented for 91 dollars, and i'd say kate rocked it she rocked this this reused dress i think that is such a really good idea and she looked amazing in it she just looked flawless and just so beautiful and poised and elegant and i can see how someone like a megan could be highly highly jealous of someone like Catherine, because she is just she is the package i mean she's the, she's perfect in all that she tries to do i mean she's not a perfect person but her appearance her showing up her works her whole aura about her shows that she's committed to doing the right thing and i think that must be very infuriating for someone like megan because she wants to be Catherine. she wants to be like a Catherine, but she never will be because her husband will never be king. She'll never have the importance that Prince William has. Her husband will never be of the level of a Prince William. It's just what it is. And you have to just settle for the fact that you are second best in a certain world time and place. If that, there was a lot of backlash about them dropping their promo for Netflix during their visit, the Prince and Princess of Wales' visit to the United States. And they, there should be backlash to that. I'm not sure a lot of people will, will recognize it as being something wrong or they're just going just like, oh, they got a documentary coming out. I got to see that. What did you know? They dropped it during the visit of the Prince and Princess of Wales to America. I'd be like, oh, they did. Oh, okay. But I can't wait to watch that Netflix series. Like, like they just won't put it together. Some people just won't put it together. <laughs> you know, so you just, ha you just have to just 
know that some things are just the conniving is not going to be obvious to a lot of people in America. OK, it's just 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 not. They're just not going to get it. And then the one thing that I thought was also great about the recycling of everything is just that all the trees, the bushes and things that you saw on the stage there, um, it was from like the secret garden and that all of those plants and, and things that you saw on the stage was actually going to be replanted within the community at different schools around the Boston area and it's not going to go into a landfill area. So I thought that was great. It's like the whole undertone of the message around Prince William and Catherine is, is that they, Prince William and Princess Catherine, they want to do something that is, that is sustainable, that's good, that is also good for the royal family because their branding is a ripple of the work of the royal family, the good that they are doing. But the work of what Megan is doing separate from her husband, trying to branch off to do something selfish, egotistical, false in its whole messaging, it's, it's, it's a sham, it's a fraud. And I think in America, only in America, would she even have an inkling of a chance to perpetuate the lies, the nonsense that she is telling. But let's hope through the good works of those that are coming out with, um, you know, the good works of royalty, such as Catherine and William, that they can be overshadowed to see that that the monarchy is not racist and that we're not paying attention to your nonsense. We're moving forward to do good for people, to make a difference and to help people, regardless of what these two wackadoos in Montecito are actually trying to say and make you, most people, believe.